Hi everybody, I'm Emily. I'm one of the designers at The Quilted Cow. And today I'm here to show you how to make these cute little helpful heifer tinker bags. Uh, but first, before I get started with that, I want to thank our sponsors. We've got Husqvarna Viking Machines, Creative Grids, they make our rulers, our rotary cutters, and our mats. And then also the Wilmington Prince Fabrics. They make these wonderful fabrics that we work with. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is gather up all of your supplies. And one thing that I do wanna mention is that the Quilted Cow has kits for these available on our website or in the store. They are called the Tinker Bag. Um, each kit does come with all the fabric and then the little elastics that you need to be able to make four bags. And these bags are wonderful to carry things in them. Like you can put some little candies in them for your favorite person, <laughs> um, fill them with candies and give them as gifts. You can also put earbuds in them, carry little things, whatever that you feel that you need to carry in them. Right now I am holding on to some wonder clips in mine, <laughs> but they are great. The little drawstring, it's elastic and it does have a little button that draws that string nice and closed. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I am working with this Wilmington Prince fabric. It is called Blooming Blue. Um, it's a beautiful line that we are going to start featuring uh, in the store soon. So you'll need to check that out as well. Um, once you get your pieces cut, we're gonna have a outer bag piece, an inner bag piece, and then also the little top. So there's the little elastic casing top here that we've cut out. So whenever we've got that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna fold a half an inch on both of the short sides. We're gonna fold in a half an inch and a half an inch again. We're gonna press that in. And one of the things that I find very easy to work with in order to get that half inch and get it measured right is called a hot ruler. Um, it's a little felt covered ruler that you can iron right over. I use this all the time whenever I make these tinker bags and I have made quite a few sets, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler, you're gonna set it to where the half inch is gonna fold over. You fold your fabric to the wrong side, that half inch. Get that put in my right hand so that I know what I'm doing. And then come in another half inch, put your ruler there. And like I said, this ruler is great because you can just iron right over the side of that. Try not to leave my eye, my hot iron on that wool for too long. Um, so then we've got this perfectly folded half inch twice. We're gonna do that for both of the sides. Once we've done that for both of the sides, then we're gonna top stitch to secure this. And this is gonna give us a nice crisp edge and so we don't have any raw edges showing whenever we put our elastics through that casing. And then I like to take it and just top stitch a quarter of an inch, or I'm sorry, not a quarter, but an eighth of an inch, just to the inside of this line right here so that it holds both of those sides down. And I've already gone ahead and top stitched one of my casings for you to see. So once we've got that done, then we are going to fold this wrong sides together along the length of the casing. And we're going to Iron that, give it a decent press. And no, it never really holds down quite the way we want it to right there on that corner. All right, so now comes one of the easy parts. So I'm gonna line this up on my, on my mat so that it's, I've got it lined up on the one inch marks here so I can find kind of the center of this whenever I'm doing this. So I wanna center this casing, we're gonna lay the, outside of the bag, right side up. And then we're gonna center this casing with the raw edges. And this makes it easy because you're gonna be about an inch in on either side. We're just gonna line up the raw edges just like that. And then we're gonna lay the lining of the bag right side down, just right on top of that. 
And then I'm just going to give this a clip in a, about two or three places. So I'm going to make sure all of my raw edges are lined up there. I'm going to clip this here. Make sure all of my raw edges are lined up here. Give it a clip here. And then one in the middle just for good measure. Make sure that everything stays where it should. Then I'm going to take this over to the machine and I am going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way across all through all of those layers right there. And then we're going to take this back over to the iron and we're going to iron this open so that the casing is flat on top. So I just like to open up one side and then flip it over. And this is such a small bag but I do like to get kind of precise with my outside edges so that whenever I iron those, I have it to where it's right on top of that fold right there. And then I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm gonna top stitch all the way down an eighth of an inch from this edge, which I've already done with this piece right here. So once you've got it sewn with that eighth of an inch all the way down, you're gonna go ahead and thread our elastic through this through the casing. So we do want to thread the elastic through the casing first. And the reason for that is because it is very difficult to thread the elastic through the casing after we have folded it in half and sewn it together. So your elastic piece is going to come with a little button already attached to the elastic. And I like to go ahead and take that button off. So I just slip it off through the, over the fold there. I like to take that button off because I like for my elastic to thread through and then whenever I get finished I tie it off on the end to hold that elastic in place. Some people will have a tendency to thread it through and um, with the, the button still on it. Um, I haven't really figured out a really good way to do that. So I'm going to take a teal thingy, just put the elastic through the opening of that and lead that through my casing. Once you've got that, I do like to try to make sure that my elastic is kind of flat. You're going to fold this right sides together and give it, I like to give it a little clip right here just to hold it in place while I mess with the elastic a little bit because we want to make sure that this elastic stays out of the way. In order to do that, I just fold the elastic back Fold the tails of the elastic back and give it a little clip right here. You can pin it or clip it, whatever way, whichever way you want to do it. And then you're going to sew a quarter inch all the way down and all the way across the bottom. Once you've got that sewn, then it's on to one little extra step that is not in your, that is not on the pattern. Um, I have done that already. I've sewn the quarter inch all the way down and all the way across the bottom. Whenever I make these bags, find the empty one. Um, I don't like to have the raw edges exposed on the inside because they get kind of raggedy and we don't like to have raggedy raw edges that fray a lot and then whenever you're pulling out whatever's in there you're pulling out raw edges. So I do a little extra step like I said this is not in your pattern so a little extra tip for you is I go ahead and I zigzag all the way down and all the way across before I box my corners. And I like to start it in a little bit and then backstitch to the end. That's the same thing that I do with this, with this quarter inch stitch. I start here and then I backstitch and come back down so that my threads aren't hanging off the end as well because these edges are gonna be exposed a little bit once you've made your bag. So you can kind of see, and the edges have gotten a little bit raggedy and that's okay but you can kind of see how that is going to keep everything from, um, from fraying all of your edges from fraying in the future. So once I get finished with this bag, I do take a few extra moments and just cut off, trim off those extra little threads, just use my scissors, get rid of those, and that makes things a lot easier. So the next thing from the pattern, we're back to the pattern now, um, I'm going to go ahead and finger press this little edge just so I have a nice little line and we're going to box the corner. So if you've never boxed a corner, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make it so that this bag sits and has a little bottom to it, a little flat bottom to it. So if you've never boxed a corner, it's super easy. You're just going to open up from the inside and take that line that I finger pressed there. So I've got a little reference line and I want to line that up with my bottom seam line. So you open up to make a triangle here and that little finger press line is lined up with that bottom seam line 
And then I'm going to grab my Creative Grids ruler and go ahead and find, I'm going to box it with a half inch. So I like to use one of these lines to line up with my seams. And then <laughs> the, let me see here. So one of these lines is lining up and then my half inch is right here. It's going to be right on that point right there to, to line that up. This is just a friction marking pin, but I'm just gonna draw a line all the way across that right there. And then I do wanna clip this. So I'm just gonna grab a clip real quick. And if you had a bigger box corner, I would suggest clipping back here. But since it's such a small box corner, I just wanna hold that in place, make sure that I don't lose that spot. So the next thing I do, and one of the things that'll make this a little bit easier is if you take and you just clip that corner up to where the, the quarter inch seam line is, and this, is, this makes it easier because now you can lay one seam going one way and one seam going the other way. So you're gonna line up your seams. So here's one seam here and just directly underneath of it is the other seam. And I'm just kind of squishing those seams together with my fingers, making sure that they line up really nice. And then I'm going to take my Creative Grids ruler again and line up my mark here my half inch or my little mark there. And I'm gonna bring it up till I'm at a half an inch here. And I'm gonna draw my line just right across there, just like that. Grab another clip and make sure that I close the lid on this friction pin because it does dry out. You don't want that to happen. Once I've got that, now I'm gonna go back over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew directly on that line. So once we've got that, now we're gonna cut a quarter inch. Now you can either use scissors or you can measure this. If you're not used to what your quarter inch is, if you're kind of new to the, whole, to the whole quarter inch seam, then go ahead and use your ruler and your rotary cutter. And let me get that turned the right way, out of the way. And then I'm gonna put the quarter inch line of the ruler directly on that seam line that I just sewed. And then I'm, I'm basically just cutting off the barest little bit right there. So it's not, not a whole lot that I'm getting rid of. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead once again and zigzag stitch. This is once again, not in your pattern. This is just that little extra that I do so I don't have raggedy edges whenever I have my, I don't have those raw edges and everything whenever I have my bag finished. And I'm not really worried about all those extra threads because like I said, I do come back and I go ahead and, uh, trim off all of those raw edges, all the extra stray threads that have been, that have been made as I sew along. So let's go ahead and turn this right side out. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna thread that bead back on. Now I have not found an easy way to thread the bead back on whenever I finish with this bag, except for one way. Before I get to that, I am gonna poke my corners out a little bit with that teal thingy. It does make a good little poker tool. And let me grab my little bead thread or cheater tool, which is basically a piece of thread that is long enough that I can double it up and thread this kind of like you might use like a needle threader. So I've doubled up the thread I found that doubling up this thread works a lot better than not doubling it. And if you notice on the bead, there's a smaller end and a wider end. And I just fold this little loop as small as it can go and thread it down through that smaller end. This is probably super difficult to see on camera. <laughs> and then take this, go ahead and pull this so that I have plenty of ends give it a little clip here to hold that. And those wonder clips, they are super handy. Act as like third hand for you. All right, so I've put the elastic up through that thread and then I hang on to the bead, wrap my finger around the thread a time or two and just pull that through. And that pulls that elastic through that bead a lot easier. I have tried using a poker tool 
And for some reason, it just will poke holes into that elastic and it will not, it will not allow that elastic to be poked through that, that bead very easily. So last thing I do is tie this in a knot. And this is one of my favorite little bags to do because they are so quick and easy. Your kit, it provides all the fabric that you need to make four of these bags all the elastic and beads that you need to make four of these bags and look how fast that that goes together. So that is the Helpful Heifer Tinker Bag. Kits are available on our website or in our store, so go check them out. Make sure that you like and subscribe to these videos so that you can keep getting new content every, every time we post videos. And thank you so much for watching. Okay, you wicked cool quilters, good job. You made it to the end. We would like to thank our sponsors, Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines, Creative Grids, Rulers, Rotary Cutters, and Mats, and Wilmington Prints for the beautiful fabrics. Thanks for watching!